Hey guys, I thought I would do a quick tutorial that I've been meaning to make for a while and this is how to make a pretty good thumbnail on a YouTube video in Photoshop. It's going to be pretty basic, this is going to be my process and I'm actually going to make the thumbnail that's going to be for this video so you can see a real life example. Now I'm actually on this monitor so you're going to see me looking over to the side so don't think I'm looking away but basically the first thing you need to do is open up Photoshop, create a new project and you want this to be 1920 by 1080. You could probably get away with 1280 by 720, but you probably want 1920 by 1080. Resolution 72 is okay. RGB, these settings can pretty much just stay default, but I would definitely have a transparent background content, but that's just my preference. So after you get this opened up, the first thing we want to do is add some images. Now, I'm actually going to add in a couple, uh, one image of me. I like to put an image of me so you know who's uploading the video. I've got some generic shots in here that I'm going to use. I'll pick one. Uh, let's pick this one. This, this one looks okay. I think. Yeah, this one looks alright. So let's open up this one. And the first thing you're going to notice is this is in camera raw, <clears throat> but you can actually use Camera Raw to open up regular files. They don't have to be raw files. They can be JPEG, PNG. Camera Raw is a very useful uh, filter. You can use it as a filter to just apply basic changes to your image. Now, this is a pretty good image already. I'm going to maybe bump up the exposure just a tad. Actually, it's probably fine. And then what I like to do is bump up that saturation. The lights I use make my skin look really pale. So I'm going to just bump it up enough. You don't want to do it like that. It'll be orange and then that's like really weird looking. But then of course when you go back down I look really pale. So let's do something a little bit. That, that looks alright. That's not too much. And then we can just click open. Nothing else to be done there. Now this opened as a separate file. So what I want to do is just select me out of this and you might not necessarily need to do all this but I think the way that I do thumbnails encompasses a lot of useful information if you're to watch this so that's I'm just gonna go through the whole thing see this is I'm just using the quick selection tool uh, it's probably the easiest way uh, make us see I got some of this on the extra okay now you go to the select refine edge tool to see how the selection turned out and it looks good but as you can see the edges look kinda weird so what I always do is do smart radius and then you click show radius and this is gonna kinda automatically detect the edges and as you can see already the edges look a lot better especially near the hair um, it's not perfect I'm gonna smooth that out a bit um, maybe even feather it and then you can actually use this brush thing which kind of re-evaluate see how it did that um, it got rid of a little bit of the background it's just my hair now so that's how you do that really simple um, you don't have to really do anything special with it <clears throat> and then now I have the selection you just press control C or you can do edit copy bring this over to the uh, file that I'm, the project that I'm actually gonna make the thumbnail and then resize it you do control T or you can do edit free transform and then resize it how you want and then of course if you have any uh, you know spots or zits or anything you can use the uh, spot healing tool I forgot to shave that day apparently but there's not really much you can do about that so that looks okay and so now that's pretty much just what I'm going to have on that side and then on the left side I'm going to have some text now the thing you have to know about text is you want to keep it very minimal if you're going to have any at all and you want it to be huge so thumbnail is a really long word um, so it's going to be hard to fit it in there so tutorial is also a really long word how about we do a simple how to thumbnail Actually, let's see what happens if we do thumbnail tutorial. And I'm, I'm going to change that color, obviously. So highlight that. 
Um, let's just make it black for now. And we can do control T again to resize it. I guess it would be command T on a Mac. And we want to get, that's not going to be big enough considering how small thumbnails are. So why don't we move me over here, way over, and then over here. And you want to keep in mind <clears throat> that the bottom right, pretty much like this whole size, this whole part of the thumbnail can be potentially covered up by the timestamp in the video in the thumbnail in, on YouTube you know how they put the thumbnail the uh, little timestamp how long it is that's where that's gonna be so you don't want to put any text down here or important stuff down here it's gonna be blocked off you're not gonna be able to read it so I like to put any text at the top left or bottom left if you're or top right uh, just making sure that whole little area is not gonna be covered so this looks like a pretty good size, I guess. It's okay that it's on top of me. And now you can decide, I like to use either black or white typically for text, but you can also use like in your face colors if you really wanna make a contrast color like green or red or something like that. For this purpose, I'm just gonna do uh, white. Uh, I'm gonna go back, let's do white. So you just highlight it go up to white and now you can't really read it what I pretty much always do on text is add a stroke around it so what you want to do <clears throat> right click over the layer of the text right click go blending options go to stroke make it position outside is what I prefer and then pretty much just increase the stroke until you think it looks good um, if it's too thin it's gonna be it's gonna look kind of weird when it's shrunken down. If it's too thick, it just looks stupid. So, you know, you just mess around with this and you can also kind of resize it by using that and seeing how it looks. You can read that, so that looks okay. For font, I'm using a font I'm already probably gonna use. Um, I like to use Helvetica. Um, so I'm using black condensed. So it's condensed, but black. the black one is really it's not referring to the color, it's con referring to the style. So this is a really thick font and it's condensed, which means the text is close together, which is important for these large words. If I were to just do um, black, you can see how much it spreads out and that doesn't fit and that will look kind of dumb. So let's go back to black condensed. It fits a lot better. But if it's a short word, you might just want to use not condensed or something like that. Font that you're going to use to come down to completely to preference. So, next we need a background. So, to get a background, I like to just go on Google and type in something like, I don't know, if you can imagine some sort of texture, let's type something in like lines texture. Alright, and keep in mind you're just looking for the texture, don't really worry about the color of the background right now. And then you want to go to search tools and large because it's 1920 and needs to be big. So just scroll down to something you like and really, really don't worry about the color right now. Um, I'll show you why. So I'm just going to find one that I like. Let's see. Something cool looking. I don't know. I've actually seen a lot of these. I've used them before. How about this one looks pretty interesting. So you just go to view image, sometimes it takes you to the site, and then you just right click, copy image, and uh, it is important to note that you probably want to look at the license technically. Um, you're probably not going to get in trouble if you use these, but you know, you should probably know that it might be, it's probably not going to be fair use, but you're probably not going to get in trouble, so I'm not responsible if you copyright infringe anyone. <laughs> now, oh, I got to move this back to the top. So, okay, so this looks okay, but it's gray. I don't like that. So what you can do is actually add a layer above it that is going to be basically a coloring layer. So create a new layer. Um, you can do that with this button down at the bottom right. And then you do edit fill in this empty layer. Don't do it on anything else or it'll cover everything up. And pick whatever color you want to use as 
you know, the general background color. I'll do like a light blue, so you do um, uh, just color, maybe pick something like this. Okay, okay, and you're like, well now, well that doesn't look okay. So what you need to do is you go down, you need to pick the layer style. So you do normal and then overlay and see what it did? So it basically overlaid that color over the texture. So you still get the texture, but it's the color you want. Now, let me address something else. If you have a, here, take this for example, this background, this is very color. The other one we have is pretty much black and white. But say you wanted to use this background. Let's get rid of, let's just hide those. Let's say you wanted to use this background, but say you wanted to make a red back. Maybe you wanted to be red. So you do the new layer, you do edit fill red, and then, okay, you do overlay. Uh-oh, that looks weird. I don't like that. That looks stupid. What is it? So the reason it did this is because it's basically overlaying and combining the colors from the textured layer you're using and the overlay. So what you can do with this is actually create, take away the saturation, which is going to remove the colors. So you can either do this by going to image adjustments, hue and saturation, or if you want to be non-destructive and go back and change it later, you can create this little adjustment layer, which goes above it and adjusts everything below it. <clears throat> so in this, we're going to do hue and saturation as well. Now we want to just take away the saturation. As you can see now it's black and white. You can actually increase some of the lightness and stuff like that. And now when we turn on the red layer, it's red. Now we can actually go back in this adjustment layer now and it's over here. We can adjust it. So exactly how we want it. We can even bring back the saturation and change the hue. But this is only, we took away the saturation. So that's not going to make a difference. So you can change it exactly how you want. So that's just an example, say you want, for if it's a color texture and you want to get rid of that. All right, so let's bring back what we had before. Actually, I might like the other, now let's just use this. Now, this looks kind of unbalanced, so why don't we add, there's a whole bottom left space, so why don't we add something to the bottom left, like, I don't know, YouTube logo. Okay. This looks okay. Copy image. Add that in. And that's below everything. Let's add that up. Okay. And then for this, it's going to be different for every image, but you can use the magic wand tool if there's like one color that's continuous and just delete that. Actually, I don't want to delete that all, otherwise it looks weird. So let's just do highlight that. And then I want to get rid of everything else in that layer besides what I highlighted. So I'm going to do select inverse. That's going to basically inverse the selection and then delete. And since I only had that highlighted, that layer highlighted, it's only going to affect that layer. And then we could shrink this, control T. And then just add that in. And then, yeah, we can just rearrange stuff. I think this is, pretty, this is a pretty good, uh, simple idea for a thumbnail. And uh, maybe move me over. I could probably even move me down a bit. And I think that's pretty good. Maybe I'll adjust this again. And I think that looks okay. So there we have it. Now, all right, let me go over something else. So say we do save as, and let's save this. Um, let's put this in the tech thumbnail tutorial. So we save this, and we're going to save this as a PNG file because you want to up, you want to save it as PNG. JPEG can sometimes get compressed when you upload it. it looks different than when you saved it. Um, so you want to upload as PNG because it's lossless, it's not going to be changed, it's going to look pretty much exactly how you saved it. But I want to take, I want to give an example of a problem you might run into. Say we have the thumbnail and up, 
perfect example. So this is 2.17 megabytes. Now, YouTube requires that thumbnails be under two megabytes. Now, you could save it as a JPEG and increase the compression, but we, we really want PNG. So, well, I already saved it as a PNG, and the first thing you want to do is, when you save it, uh, compression smallest slow, and you don't want to do interlaced. Interlaced, I'm not going to explain it, but it's going to make the file bigger. So, compression smallest slow, and then I already saved it. Now, so how do you make this smaller if it's already compressed? So there's a really cool trick you can use that I know that is called posterize. Now, what you do is a lot of the information is probably in my face, but if you didn't have something like this, what you do is basically create a new adjustment layer called po and then go to posterize, and you can see what it did. So it kind of posterized it. It simplified the colors. It basically reduced the number of colors. Now, if you increase this a lot, you can't even notice the difference. So what you want to do is lower it as much as you can until you start to see a difference. See, I don't know if you can see this, but right around maybe 30, you can start to see a difference, especially in my face. It starts to look kind of funky, but at 30, or even 35, let's disable it, you can't even really notice the difference. But now let's save it and see what happened. Let's save it again, compressed again. Let's open this back up. And now it's all the way down to 1.62 megabytes. So it basically reduced the number of colors and simplified the image by making it posterized and made the image a lot smaller but you can't even tell so that's a really good trick you can use um, if you zoomed in really far you might be able to tell you really can't even tell at all so that's a really cool trick you can use if your files too big but you don't want to save it as a JPEG and compress it and make it look like crap so that's pretty much it you, I can now upload it. It's small enough at 1.62 megabytes and it's 1080p. That you're definitely going to use the posterize if you're uploading huge like 1440p or 4K thumbnails. That's a really cool trick. So hopefully that is useful to you guys. Now that's pretty much it. I'm going to use this as the thumbnail once I upload the video. So hopefully you guys found this useful. I know it, it got kind of long, but it was. Uh, you know, it wouldn't take this long if you're just doing this yourself with experience. It usually takes me about five minutes to make a thumbnail if I'm, you know, not <laughs> explaining everything I'm doing. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section. I'll be looking out and trying to answer whatever I can. If you have any other cool tricks that you think I or others might find useful, definitely feel free to let me know in the comment section as well. Uh, if you want to like the video, if you found this helpful, that'd be great. You can also subscribe. I try to make new videos really often. I know I've been slacking, but I usually do about once a week. And you can also follow me on Twitter. Let me know any suggestions for future videos, that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Have a good one.